In 2017, I did around $13,000 in sales. 2018, I did $15,000 in sales. 2019, I did $21,000 in sales. 2020, I did $57,000 in sales. In 2021, I did $73,000 in sales. And then in 2022, I did $35,000 in sales. The beginning, 2016. I posted my very first listing on Etsy March 9th, 2016. I got my first sale on April 4th, 2016. So in 2016, being open from March to December, I did $3,195 in sales. I was averaging around $250 a month in sales, and I seen a huge increase that very first year in November, and I did like $400 in sales that month, and then I seen an even bigger increase that very first December, which it went up to $919 in sales that month. And unfortunately, I couldn't find any spreadsheets from 2016, which would technically be my first year in business, even though it wasn't a full year. So I'm not sure how much I spent on overhead or inventory in 2016. My following at the time. At this time, I was posting two to three videos a week on YouTube. And my very first video I posted on YouTube was December 13th, 2014. And I was basically getting less than 200 views a video. Until February 8th, 2015, I posted a DIY honey sugar body scrub video and it got 6,000 views. At this time, I wasn't selling products but every once in a while I did have a video get like a few thousand views. My next video to pop off was actually a video titled Why Switch to DIY All Natural Beauty Products. It was at this time that I was noticing any DIY skincare product was definitely what my viewers were wanting to see, or I guess I should just say people on the internet because I didn't have a viewership or a following at the time, I was trying to find one. And I really noticed people liked my DIY skincare products. I posted a DIY hand sanitizer on September 1st, 2015, and it got 17,000 views. A DIY all-natural moisturizing face wash posted September 7th, 2015, that got almost 6,000 views. And around March 7th, 2016, I posted a DIY air freshener video that got 123,000 views. In March 2016 was when I opened my Etsy shop. Then on March 15th, 2016, I posted a DIY natural eyeshadow video that got 34,000 views. And I mention all of this because it's clear that I was gaining somewhat of a following of people who liked my DIY skincare products. And I think this is really important to note because most people who are starting out selling don't even have a following online yet. I was doing YouTube for almost two full years by the time I opened up my business. At the beginning of 2016, I had 846 subscribers. And by the end of 2016, I had 1,533 subscribers. 2017. I'd say 2017 definitely felt like my first official year in business, and it was definitely when I found my footing on YouTube. So at this time, it seemed like most videos I posted was getting at least a thousand views per video. And about like every five to 10 videos, it would like pop off and I would get like 10,000 views. At the beginning of 2017, I had 1,545 subscribers. And by the end of 2017, I had 4,051 subscribers. So in 2017, which is kind of what I like to consider as my first full year in business, I did $13,034.16 in sales. I spent $4,805.33 on inventory. I spent $1,688.65 on overhead. And I spent $2,811.11 on Etsy fees and shipping costs. So in total, I profited in 2017 $2,274.75. 2018. At the beginning of 2018, I had 4,074 subscribers. And by the end, I had 18,846 subscribers. At this time, I was getting around 10,000 views per video. Not all of them hit that mark, but like a good majority of them did. And I did $15,523.49 in sales in 2018. I spent 2,264 cents on inventory. 
I spent $1,078.35 on overhead costs, and I spent $4,145.86 on Etsy fees and shipping costs. So for my second full year in business, I profited $8,098.63. 2019. At the beginning of 2019, I had 18,908 subscribers. And by the end of 2019, I had 43,345 subscribers. In 2019, I did $21,355.51 in sales. I spent $3,511.40 on inventory. I spent $2,067.16 on overhead and I spent $5,015.29 on Etsy fees and shipping costs. So my third full year in business, I profited $10,761.66. 2020. This is the year I blew up. Everybody was home due to the pandemic, and I guess everyone wanted to make their own products or start their own business. And I think this is why I all of a sudden experienced a bunch of growth. A lot of social media and business success is just luck and being in the right place at the right time. I got into this niche very early and I already had a whole catalog of content uploaded to my YouTube channel. So I think people were just fed my channel that year. At the beginning of 2020, I had 43,422 subscribers. And by the end of 2020, I had 114,634 subscribers. I finally hit 100K on YouTube. And that was the year I got my YouTube flag. It was amazing. So in 2020, I did $57,551 in 41 cents in sales. I spent $10,521.07 on inventory. I spent $3,938.39 on overhead. And I spent $11,183.15 on Etsy fees and shipping costs. My fourth full year in business, I profited $33,305.59. On average, businesses take up to five years to be profitable. My business was profitable the very first year. Of course, it wasn't by much, but it was still profitable. And I couldn't believe by the fourth year in business, I was making more money in a year than I ever had. And this was just my business's income, not everything else. Did I work more in 2020 than I ever did in my entire life? Yeah but I was so grateful to actually be working and have an income. I know so many people were struggling that year. And I remember at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, everyone was asking me to make a homemade hand sanitizer. And I remember saying something like, there are plenty of DIY hand sanitizer recipes online already, and I'm not trying to profit off of the fear from this pandemic. And of course, this was at the very beginning of 2020, so it was before I knew I was gonna blow up, but I can't help but think all the time, maybe I just got good karma because I wasn't trying to profit off of people's fear from the pandemic like so many people were doing online that year. I don't know if you guys remember it, but it was ridiculous what people were trying to sell people that cured or like prevented you from getting COVID. I just wanted to keep posting as normal. And in turn, somehow I did profit from the pandemic. I do feel a lot of guilt when I think back to this time. I prospered during this time while other people lost so much. And I can't help but feel so much empathy for those of you who were negatively impacted by the pandemic. I really hope you've recovered from any misfortune that you experienced. And for those of you who lost loved ones, I'm so sorry for your loss. 2021. At the beginning of 2021, I had 114,792 subscribers. And by the end, I had 178,082 subscribers. I did $73,962.60 in sales in 2021. I spent $10,208.98 on inventory. I spent $10,225.96 on overhead. $11,437.58 on Etsy fees and shipping costs. So in total, I did $36,831.34 in profit my fifth full year in business. 2022. At the beginning of 2022, I had 
263 subscribers. And by the end, I had 238,021 subscribers. In 2022, I did $35,968.20 in sales. I spent $23,857.13 total on overhead, inventory, and Etsy fees and shipping costs. So in total, I profited $12,111.07 my sixth year in business. So as you can tell, sales and profit went down. This is because I wasn't open the entire year. I was only open for half of the year. I also opened my website up that year and I opened it up that October. So from October to December, I did 5,000 in sales over there on my website. As I mentioned earlier, I had a huge growth in the year of 2020. I worked more than I ever did in my entire life from 2020 to 2021, which I know was only two years, but at the end of 2021, I got really sick. At that time, I didn't think it was COVID because I took a COVID test and it was negative. But obviously looking back now, I realized, no, it was probably definitely COVID and it was just a negative test. At that time, I was also in the middle of buying a house while juggling my business, my YouTube channel. I think between COVID and my immune system being extremely low from probably not eating enough, not sleeping enough, and definitely overworking myself, I ended up being sick for probably a total of three months. I just remember it took a really long time for me to recover. It was extremely difficult to move while being sick. I basically just couldn't handle it anymore. I was so depressed, I was so weak, and I just wanted it all to stop. So I closed my business January of 2022 while I moved and got settled into my new home and got my workshop together. Looking back now, I realize I opened back up my business way too soon. I opened back up in May of 2022, so I only had a total of five months to get settled into my new place and get my workshop completely together. And that might sound like a lot of time, but I spent like two to three months of it still sick and trying to recover. I realize now looking back that I never should have reopened the business. It, it just should have stayed closed. Another thing I realized while looking back in 2020 or 2021, I should have started making moves to hire some help. I was making enough money to hire somebody to help me, but I was literally just so busy and I was doing everything myself. I didn't even really know how to go about hiring somebody. It was also still COVID and we weren't supposed to be going out and socializing. So how in the world was I supposed to find somebody like equipped to work with me when we weren't supposed to be socializing? I even remember getting a lot of comments from you guys at that time saying, hey, you're experiencing growing pains. It's time to go get some help. And I didn't listen to any of the advice you guys gave me. But also looking back, I realized deep down, I didn't want my business to blow up. I think that's why I kind of like low key sabotaged the business to make it fail. At this time, I knew so much more about formulating than I did when I first initially launched my business and made all those products I was selling. And I just wasn't proud of the products I was selling anymore. They weren't products that like I felt comfortable marketing and pushing on people because I knew I could do better than that. But a lot of people were already stuck on these products. They purchased them and sold them private label under their brands and people like consistency. I couldn't keep changing up all my products and discontinuing things. So I just tried my best to hurry up and reopen the business as soon as I could. I really thought I had restructured the business enough to where I could keep up with it on my own. And I did for a while, but again, in April of 2023, I closed my business down for good. At least the product selling part. The LLC is still definitely in action and I'm still selling stuff on my website. I just sell all the formulas to the products I used to sell. If you wanna make any of the products I used to sell, you can totally do that and purchase the formulas over on my website. In 2023, I did $8,397.37 in sales. My website did $8,000 in sales. So in four months of this year, I did $16,397.35 in sales for my final-ish full, that's not even a full year. 
if I would have kept selling products this year and like kept up that trend, I would have ended up doing about 60,000 to $70,000 in sales this year. I'm not really sure what my profit would be, obviously, but like that's still 60 to 70K in sales. That's something I'd be more than proud of. Ever since I quit selling physical products and switched to selling formulas, of course my sales have went down, but I don't have any overhead, no inventory, no shipping costs, and there's no physical labor involved. So it's all just straight profit. From May to now, I've done $6,779.82 in sales over on my website. So this isn't Etsy, selling digital files, which like I said, it's all profit. So I'm probably actually making more now selling digital files than I did selling physical products. Although I think a physical product brand can grow bigger, do more in sales, you know, just you could prosper more with it. But the selling digital files is so much easier and it's just passive income. Overall, I learned a lot from this business adventure. I do think it's just one of the first businesses that I'll open in my life. I can definitely see myself doing something again in the future. Not sure exactly what, but something. And I'm just happy that I can take everything I learned from my first business adventure and apply it to the next one. Someone to listen